What's up guys, I'm Pause Build and welcome to a brand new franchise zoo in Planet Zoo. We're going to be doing a tropical zoo this time and I'm going to start it off by making the path 7 meters because I kind of like the 7 meter length. I'm going to remove these curves on the path because I don't like those. So I'm just unticking in the settings, curve on ground path. I had it on because I was using it on a different one. Um, oh, and railing on ground path actually, sorry. I want the curb, I don't want the railing. <laughs> Already messed it up. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna build out a little bit. My plan with this zoo is to make it an eco zoo, so it's gonna be as environmentally friendly as possible. And we're gonna basically only use animals that actually need to be conserved. So we've got animals who are gonna be endangered or animals who are critically endangered. And I think there's one animal that's actually extinct in the wild which came in the uh, conservation pack. So I'm excited to get get that and, and you know, we can see how this goes. Now, you may notice that the land is a bit different. It's because I'm using the sculpted map rather than the flat terrain. Um, and I thought it'd just be a bit interesting. It gives our zoo a little bit more of a, you know, a bit more of an interesting look. And my theme with this, again, because it's environmentally friendly, I'm not just gonna hack away at all the land and flatten it all out necessarily in every place. We're gonna try and respect the topography that we've got here and build something that actually would happen in real life if we were trying to be, you know, environmentally conscious. So I'm going to put the heat maps on and go on power because you can see we've got a starting power source here. I'm going to try and use this as much as possible. So I'm actually just going to build out to there so we know where this extends to. So that's why I've built out one long path. And I'm going to leave some room at the entrance in case we want to spice it up later and make it a little bit nicer. But I think we should first off put in a little area for our guests so I'm going to uh, like a little square uh, just about here. So I'm going to click align to grid and you can see what changes like this. I'm going to select somewhere on the path and then you can build out these nice plaza areas, which I know a lot of people uh, don't know or are wondering how to do. This is how you do it. It's align to grid. Um, I'm going to build out just this far, I think. Um, maybe one, one more. Um, and then in this, I'm going to put facilities i'm gonna do just I'm gonna get rid of first off i'm gonna get rid of blueprints so blueprints off and then i just want staff facility oh no i just want guest facilities um and i'm gonna put in a chief beef counter so these counters are essentially the same as the uh, buildings you got here it's just easier to uh make your own building and seeing as we're going eco-friendly i'm just gonna start off with one counter and then we can make it a nice building around it and actually i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete a couple of sections of path like that so we can put a couple of facilities in here and then they don't because they're going to want to join to the path so we try and line this up slightly like that and then let's get a gulpy soda these are the classic two um, I don't like this grid so as you can see the grid isn't aligned properly so I'm just going to go into the settings here and I'm going to turn the grid size down to one and now I can I have like much more freedom with where I put it and I might I'm going to put them here and then I'm going to exit the group I'm going to right click and then when I click uh, select group I'm going to move them now I think I can just move them with if I click X Yes, then you can move Mercury. I wasn't sure if it was going to move the little path bits, the joins, but it has. So that's perfect. I'm going to put them there so nice and central. And you can see we've got our first two staff members. So oh. do comment uh, down below, guys, what you want our staff to be called. And I'll uh, I'll try and name some of them. Obviously, it won't be in this episode, but in future episodes, we can name our staff. So we've got some personalized ones. And, you know, that's always a bit of fun. But the minute, we've got Luke and Tiffany. So hello, Luke and Tiffany. You can also, next what I'm going to do is put in some staff facilities. So you can, what I was going to say is you, you you can put your staff facilities around where your guests are going to be, but they have a negative impact, at least some of them do. So I'm going to put a green staff path. These are paths that guests can't walk on. And I'm going to turn the width down to four. And I'm just going to build off in this direction because I think I want my staff facilities over here. And then we'll build some habitats around them. Um, I want to make sure they have power, that's, that's, that's one thing, so I, I can't make it too far away. But how about there? Let's go with that. Build out a nice long path. And 
also, I really like this tree bark. Uh, I've never really used it, like this path type. And I think it's been in the packs for ages. Like, I don't actually think it's from DLC. I think it's in the base game, but I've, I've never used it. And I really love it now. I, it's just really grown on me. Um, anyway, back to the actual game. Uh, if you go to Star Facilities and select all of them, again, I've turned all the blueprints off. So if it looks different for you, that's probably why. Um, and you just go into blueprints, blueprints off. And I'm going to just add in one of everything. So our Animal Trade Center, this is how we're going to get animals in. If you're wondering how I'm rotating the buildings, I'm just hitting Z. Um, if you want to move them right, you can press X and then adjust their position like a bit more with a bit more control. But um, the Animal Trade Center isn't one that guests really care about. So I'm going to put it somewhat close to the guests. Um, and then I'm going to keep building along. Same with the Keeper Hut. And then I think quarantine does bother them. I'm going to put the workshop, the staff room, the research center, then the vet and the quarantine. So the quarantine is where we're going to put our animals just when they, before they come into the zoo, just to check they're not sick. And you know, if you do have six animals, six animals, six animals, sick animals, you can put them in here first. Um, and then they'll get moved into the vet just to, just to check what's going on. Or if they're sick, you can put them straight into the vet if you know what's wrong with them. Um, for now though, you can see I've put all of these here. They all look absolutely disgusting because it's just the uh, outer shell of the building and we're gonna make it look nicer later, don't worry. But they're all within the power. If I click negative impact on guests, see this this red path? Okay, so they, they do mind the trade center, just not very much, not as much as quarantine or the vet. But I have no idea why, because honestly, if I saw the vets, I'd say, oh great, they're looking after their animals. But hey, these guests don't like them, they're a bit picky and this will all be much more attractive later in the game. So now we've got our staff facilities, let's hire some staff. So the staff we're going to have, we've already got Luke and Tiffany, our, vendor, uh, our vendors who are going to look after the facilities as far as the guest facilities. Um, we're going to need a caretaker. So I'm just going to click caretaker and plop them down. That's one and they'll be added. So we've got Mitzi. Again, we'll rename all of these. Um, we're going to want a keeper for our first habitat. Um, I've right clicked, so I <laughs> deselected then, I should have done. Uh, mechanic. Um, I don't think we need security right now. I'm going to do a vet and I might not do an educator just now. Um, essentially, the security is a security guard that's going to go around your zoo and check that people aren't stealing or vandalizing things. And at the start, that's just really not that important to be paying someone's salary when we're kind of going to be a little bit, a little bit strapped for cash at the start. And an educator is great to boost the education of your zoo, but I, I don't think we need it on our first habitat. Maybe once we've got a couple up and running, we'll get an educator because an added bonus that they've added in one of the updates is that the educators don't just do educa educational talks that they used to. They actually walk around the zoo and educate people. So these are our four levitating staff and who are they? What are they called again? Oh, there we go. If I play, they'll come into the world. We've got Jana, Jana, Stan, Ronald. Oh goodness, that's that's the name you don't hear very much. And Mitzi again, yeah. Goodness, that is it's a nice side parting you got there, my friend. Middle. Ooh. That's not gone out of fashion. Anyway. They're just basically gonna walk around the zoo. Um they don't actually have a work zone at the minute. So if we assign them a work zone, and we do that by creating a work zone, uh we can basically tell them what to work on. Now, first off, one thing I always do is I select everything on my zoo and I just make a work zone called zoo. Um, and this is just going to include everything. And for pe people like that, you can assign like the uh, mechanic and the caretaker. And if you had security, you could assign them as well. Um, I might assign the vet to everything as well. Basically, if there's buildings in it that they don't use, they'll just ignore them. But you want to make sure that your work zones include the staff room because that's actually important for all the uh, staff to be able to use. Um, I am going to make different work zones though. I'm going to, for now, I'll tell you what, I'll start as I mean to go on. I'm going to select these two and I'm going to make an, uh, if I can spell, entrance guest facilities. And that is going to be where we put our two vendors. Uh, at the minute, where are they? Here, I'm going to put them on entrance guest facilities. And if I click 
the uh, bar so they come down. I'm going to put them on entrance guest facilities. Basically, if we get another vendor, so at the minute one of them is just assigned to each, but if we've got another vendor, then they just work on any of them. So now they're like all rotating in, which is kind of what we want, rather than just you work on this one place. Um, so, oh, on a sense stuff, we've got a keeper, and I'm going to make a work zone when we make our first habitat, because I only want to assign one keeper to one habitat until they get a bit more trained up, and then we can... You know, we can have multiple keepers and they can have multiple habitats, but I don't want to just put all the keepers on everything because otherwise some animals might not get fed on time and it's just a bit of a mess. So let's get started and make our first habitat, eh? If I carry on with this path, so it's gone down to four, so I wanted to put it back up to seven meters wide. I'm going to build one more out there just so I know we can, we can move along. I think I might put a habitat here. Um, one thing we've got to think about is water. So the one facility we haven't put in is utilities. We've already got power, so we don't have to worry about this. And in our previous franchisee, we unlocked the wind turbine. But I'm going to try and get solar panels because wind turbines, whilst they're eco-friendly, like they kill a lot of birds, which doesn't really get talked about very much. Um, so it's not actually very good for the bird, like the local bird wildlife. And if we're trying to be conservationist, I don't think we can be killing local animals. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the solar panels, um, but water treatment is important and we do need to put a water treatment, uh, so you've got this massive radius on it, but essentially it needs to be able to reach where we're gonna put the water for the habitat. So if, as long as it's somewhere, I mean, it's gonna have negative impact as well, but as long as we put it like, let's try and get it up to the line. Let's put it here. And then we put a little staff path connecting it. No, on four. There we go. And now if we go back to water, as long as as long as a tiny bit of the water touches here, it will be able to flow into the water treatment and get treated. So our animals won't get sick. Right, let's actually make the habitat now. I've talked enough about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Let's actually do it. So I'm going to make a quick outline. Let's go down here. I'm gonna leave this as the square. I'm gonna I'm gonna decorate the square in a little bit, but I want to just make our habitat first. I think I'm gonna yeah, we have that come round and then come like this. I don't mind them coming up a little bit on the path. It's gonna get a little bit bumpy, but that's. That's not too bad. You're on tree bark anyway. And again, I don't want to flatten this land out because something like this isn't really going to impact anyone. But to actually remove land, and th th I don't think I fully explained why, but to like remove land, you normally need to get like digging machines in and all the fuel that it takes to, to actually clear land. And then you've got to put it somewhere. So it, it's, a, it's not a very eco-friendly process. So in an attempt to be eco-friendly, I'm, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm also not going to build this quite that close to the edge, just in case we want to put something on the outside or line it with trees or something, something pretty like that. And I think... See, I don't really want to connect this here. I might connect it uh, in here. Let's put something there. I don't quite want to connect it up to the entrance because I'm actually going to build like this. I do want to do something to the entrance, as I said before, and I don't want this to massively get in the way. But if we do something like that, that works. Then we can put a little habitat in here, and I don't think we need a massive animal for our first one. In fact, we could always move further back this way as well. Although we will be losing power at that point. We're not going to get power out here, but that doesn't particularly bother me at this, at this end of the habitat. So let's let's go a little bit further up. That's a bit better. Okay, the first animal I'm thinking of getting in our beautiful new conservation zoo is the giant otter. So I'm going to go in the Zoopedia, and I've no idea why I said that so weirdly as well. The giant otter. Uh, and there it is, giant otter. Cool. So it's endangered, so it qualifies for our conservation zoo. And if we look at natural habitat, we can see it's from South America. So my plan for this as well is to have this two South American endangered animals and I want to have them at the start and then the rest are split between Africa and Asia. So then I'm going to have an Asia part of the zoo and an Africa part of the zoo and we can keep like the, the rocks and the trees and everything like in keeping with that theme. 
which I think would be really nice. So it kind of feels like you're in that area and you can see like what the problems are in and you kind of feel like you're in that habitat um, with the animals, if that, if that makes sense. Okay, so one thing you want to take a note of, so it's in South, South America, um, it needs an aquatic, a tropical or a grassland biome or a mix of the three and it needs 360 meters squared. Now this is definitely more than that, but if we add more uh, adults, so let's say we have two adults and four children, four juveniles, now we have 540 meters. So it needs to be a decent size um, because you know we don't want to build for the lowest amount. They don't need any climbing, they do need water and they need deep water as well, which we can build. Um, the temperature is pretty decent because it's pretty easy to maintain. At the minute it's 28 degrees here and it's about to start raining if I unpause the game. And the they need a grade two fence that's higher than 1.8 meters. So instead of actually building a fence, so if you go into barriers, this is where all the fences are. Instead of building like a wooden logs, which has a resistance of three, so that's fine. That would be fine. But instead of doing that, I'm going, going to actually dig down. And I know this goes against exactly what I just said about digging, but rather than maintain all of this, because the barrier, like the, these wooden logs are going to need to be maintained quite frequently because the otters are going <laughs> to going to degrade them very quickly. Um, if we put, uh, if we just dig it down here, then we don't have to um, worry about the ongoing maintenance. And also, if our uh, guests want to see, we don't have to build elevated paths. We can just they can just see from the ground. So that's my intention is really to avoid the elevated paths, which. If you look at them, um, if I just build out here, uh, build out one, and if I press the U key twice, you can get to some higher elevations. It's all going to be like concrete and I don't know. I just want to minimize our use of concrete because it's not very really eco-friendly. Um, although the stairs there are beautiful and we will have some in the, in the zoo at some point. But for now, that's why I'm doing this. Let's get the sculpting tool. I'm going to use the push tool. Uh, see if this works. Go on nine, I'm seventy percent intensity, and I'm just going to push down till I get to a. Oh, I think I'm happy with that height for some of it. I'm going to have a few different heights. I'm going to flatten to foundation here, um, which is just going to basically flatten out. Um, and I think this is good as a general depth. I have to see if that meets the requirements or not. Whether it needs to be very slightly deeper. Um, and then we're going to have an even deeper one that's going to be where the water is. Now it's going to get a little bit ugly around here, but that's okay. We can always pull it out and fix that if we need to. One thing we just want to make sure is when they're actually in that they can't escape because um, we don't want our animals running around all over the place. The only thing we're not going to get here is some like some viewing of them in the, the deep water. So what I might actually do is have this path come right down. So again, I will try and avoid things that are going to cause problems, but as in for the environment, but sometimes like we really want, I guess, to be able to see them in their natural habitat. So I'm using the train stamp tool here just to get, oh, that was an accident. Control Z. I want to be on minus, so I subtract the terrain. Um, do the same there and here. I just basically want to make a... Ooh, I'm going to undo the last one. I just want to make a hole so that I can uh, actually go down with it. And if I put on tunneling on in the settings, then it will destroy any uh, ground in the way, which is kind of what we want. Um, okay, it doesn't like that, which is interesting. It's perhaps just too short. Is it because we've got the stands on? This is some of the problems you can get with terrain modifications. It's uh, not always the friendliest tool. I say that, it could just be that I'm really bad at it, but I'm just going to move the terrain in so it doesn't get in the way. Okay, let's put it this way and then we're going to make that go down. There we go. Now it works. I think if we build down two flights of stairs and then we come uh, up one. In fact, we can go along this path here at a lower level. Come up here. That's what I'm planning on doing as ugly as that looks right now. <laughs> 
Let's get rid of this. There we go. That will do. Um, I'm just going to smooth this all out so it doesn't look too hideous. Um, so we've gone quite close to the... Uh, Uh, pull this up. I've gone quite close to the mountain there, which is why it's gone a little bit weird, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, as long as we pull the ground out and kind of make a decent barrier on this side still. I think we're fine. We flat to foundation here. Let's just make this smaller. Oh, not quite that small. Make it like that. And we can get a nice little, nice little area there. There we go. Something like that. Just kind of like making it a bit more uneven. Smooth out there a bit. Out there. Something like that. So now we've got this slightly uh, lower area where they can go in. They can watch them do their underwater things. I'm going to just edit the terrain here then. So that we push all of this in. Because what we want is that all of this needs to be the same. In fact, we want it a bit lower than this. I want to push it even further down. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now we've got a good, we've got some deep water there and then some nice higher bits. And I might put a little bit, might have a slight ridge there. That's, that's looking like something I'm happy with. This is a, a lot of terrain modification and it is actually eating into the budget so I need to be a bit careful with this about what looks good and what we can live with. <laughs> uh, but I'm generally quite happy with this. So now if we put some water in on the terrain, if we go to water, we can put some calm water in. Oh, we can put some rough water if we wanted, but let's put some calm water in. And it's going to be obstructed. Of course it's going to be obstructed because I haven't put any glass in here. So I'm going to need, obviously, I'm going to need some glass barriers to uh, stop this. And I'm actually going to put these on flat top so that they keep the same height, even if it changes, uh, even if like the bottom changes. Um, I'm not going to angle snap. I think I might make it, instead of being there, I might make them a little bit longer. I'm going to make them 20, actually, a little bit longer. Um, no, we'll do uh, 12 or 11. Two panels come like that, and we'll have the ground come over here. Uh, where's Paul? Paul, there we go. Um, I'm gonna have to delete that barrier. So, the barriers do not like the terrain tools, so that's one thing you gotta keep in mind. Um, right, here we go. Barrier in it goes right about there, and then we might be able to push some of this away or not. Gonna fiddle with it one more time. Push this away. Add the barrier back in. That looks way better. I'm way more happy with that. And now I can actually edit the barrier again. I'm gonna click both of them so I can just drag this arrow onto both. Um, and I'm gonna raise this up to about, about here. So we've got a nice deep uh, diving area. And then this can just be null barrier for around the rest. No, nope, want it to be glass. <laughs> what we can do though, is we can add null barriers from now on. And I'm going to turn this down to seven. And null barriers are essentially areas where barriers uh, would be, but you're using like the terrain to basically in place of a barrier. So the, as long as the animals can't get out, then uh, null barriers work. So again, I'm just going to keep it on the outside of where the ground is and connect it up here. If it will let me. Nope. Not there. There. That's it. So now this should all be connected up. That's one area. To make it habitat, we do need to add a habitat gate onto it, which I didn't fully think about. And I think I might do. No, it's 1.8 meters, so I'm not going to be able to do a small wooden habitat gate. I can do a wooden habitat gate. And I might just add a little staff area. It'll be better on this side. I'm going to just edit the path here. Just delete this to little section. Uh, make a wooden habit. 
delete the null barriers here and put in a small wooden habitat gate. Again, just I'm just using Z to modify the terrain a little. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to use null barriers just to connect to the old ones. And now the rest of this can continue as normal. We're just going to have... Ooh. Okay, I need to undo. I think it's because I've got tunneling on. Yeah, I need to turn tunneling off. That was what was causing me problems before, I think. Uh, but yeah. And I want to make this that guests can walk up to it too. I'm fine with that, as long as it all connects. And what we'll do is we'll put a little uh, entrance on this so it doesn't look quite so weird. Like we'll put some rocks or something and we'll edit the terrain so that they can't escape through this area. But we need to make sure that this is smooth enough that the uh, the keepers can walk down to the uh, to the area. So let's just pull it up very slightly. Oh, I might need to get rid of the path. One last time. Oh, we'll see. We'll see if it works. Um, I, oh, it might be a bit steep. It might be a bit steep. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to just delete the barriers. Make this smoother. There we go. And then put it back in. Can all be a little bit of trial and error sometimes with this game. Um... Wouldn't have attack gate. Hopefully, though, we'll get a result that we're happy with. Let's just make sure it can connect. I'm going to put it at that angle. And null barriers. Like that. Cool. Connect the path up. Oh, that's that's not a good connection. Do not like that. <laughs> okay, let's go out, come out like that. There we go. I can live with that, but not the first one. Right, here we go. That looks a bit, all a bit strange, but it will look fine in a second. Let's actually get ourselves the animals now. So let's go. We're going to get a, what are we looking for? Let's reset all filters. Giant otter. Let's see how much they are. Okay, we can get some with conservation credits. At the minute, we've got 314 credits, so we're doing okay. And these are these are all pretty good, actually, looking at them, like the ratings. What we want is good appeal on animals, and three and a half thousand is loads. Um, I don't really want to get the super expensive ones, but some of these 100 ones might be fine. Decent fertility. Oh, he's got no fertility. Um, I might go for this male. Um, just because he's got reasonable fertility. And then we need a good female. I think I'm going to go for this one. Elena. Let's adopt her. And now if we look on our animal storage. Oh, we've still got two of our bison from our Winter Wonder Zoo. I'm actually just going to release these into the wild. That works. Yeah. Um, release them into the wild and we'll get some conservation credits for that. Which is great. So these two otters I'm going to send to zoo. I'm going to send them to the quarantine and I'm actually going to hit play now so we can start. Everyone's going to start running around. It is raining. There we go. Hideous. Hideous weather. But hopefully we'll get some covers up soon. We can let everyone buy umbrellas and they'll be okay. They'll be okay. Um, so th these are running now with the uh, little animals and they're going to enter quarantine. And then once they're out of quarantine, they can go into our zoo. I just want to make sure that we've got we've kind of done everything correctly. Um, right, let's put some water in. That's what I was going for. So we've got some some shallow water here. It's very shallow, but that's fine. And then in here, and we are going to have to add in the uh, we have to edit our work zones again because we've now made a habitat. So I'm going to en edit the zoo work zone and just add in. The bits we've missed. Um, I'm not going to edit the entrance guest facilities because that hasn't changed. It's just these two. Oh, one thing I missed. I did miss that is on the guest facilities. So I only did these two. I actually want to put the staff staff building in as well. So you can see the staff room small. I can't believe I actually said that all work zones need to have that and then I didn't do it straight after. Um, but yes, now we've got it. So when the animals come in here, they should be okay. 
Right, let's turn the blueprints off. I'm going to sort out what this situation here. And I'm going to actually put some rocks in. And I'm going to filter by the continent of South slash Central America. So we can get some rocks. I'm trying to think which rocks we want. Got some good, good variety. I might go tropical rocks from Central or South Central America. I'm just going to build. Oh, that's quite a large one. I'm going to build a bit of a uh, bit of a structure here, just that basically the animals can't get out of. Let's put another rock in here, and where was that other one? Um, I actually, I really want this. A really good one. That's the one I'm looking for. I'm just going to raise this up with shift. So it forms a bit of a roof. And then we'll support it with some rocks. Like that. And like um, this. Okay. So you build a bit of a shelter there. Oh, let's plug that hole. With a nicer looking rock than that. See, my problem is I need to stop getting into rocks because if I get too heavily invested, I'll just build a million rocks and the zoo will just be one giant rock and nothing else. But another big rock there. And I've got random rotate on, which I would recommend. Um, random rotation, which basically means that as soon as you place something, it automatically rotates the objects. So you can place loads of them in a row and you won't necessarily notice. Um, which is really good. So you can see I'm kind of blocking off here. I'm going to do this when the otters are actually in so we can see what we need to do and how we need to like make this a steeper incline. But they're both past their quarantine. So if we go into quarantine. Um, I can't see them now though. Maybe it's because I'm in nature. There we go. That was weird. It was covering it up. <laughs> We've got both our animals here and I'm going to move them both into... Habitat 25, lovingly named. I'm going to call this Giant Otters. And then they're going to go in and they're going to grab them. And these cardboard boxes, I'm going to follow our uh, staff member. Let's orbit them. Can't remember his name already. Well, it doesn't matter. It's going to change when you guys come up with a good one. What should our vet be called? The vet's got to have a good name. You've got to come up with a good one for the vet. Okay, here we go. The moment of truth. Look at them. Let's exit this camera before we get seasick. And let's look at our otters. I want to pause here, actually. Look how cool they are. I'm going to pause here very quickly just to check that they can't escape because that would be worse. That would be the worst thing. Um, let's look at habitats. And if this is traversable area, there's a few things you can look at. But we're going to look at traversable area and click on one of the otters. These are all the areas they can break out of. So they can, I think basically it's just here. Then they can get on there and here. So, oh, and here. So we just need a few more rocks, basically. I'm going to just filter so it's, uh, con no, it wasn't that, was it? It was biome tropical. Just so we just get these tropical rocks. And I might just put another big rock in here. And another big one. Like that. And the same here, but with a different large one. And I will make this habitat look more attractive. I just, let's do it again. I just want to make sure it's functional first. Okay, so I figured it out. Um, it was basically that this area was too high here, this this ground, and they were able to jump across, which is kind of crazy, but hey, they were doing it. So now we need to make sure that they're happy now that they can't escape. And we go into the terrain, we can see they're missing hard shelter. So we need to build them some form of hard shelter. And we can go into habitat and there are some beds and shelters. Um, if they were a burrowing animal, we could put a burrow in. Um, again, I'm gonna get rid of the blueprints. Oh, actually, I won't get rid of the blueprints because that's what I was going to show you. Um, there are some blueprints in here. So if you want to see, there's, there's some wooden shelters and stuff that you can... They're perfectly reasonable to build, actually, in an eco-friendly zoo. And in fact, we, we could 
No, I think we're going to do it with... I was going to suggest we did it with rocks. Um, but the more I think about it, the more I feel like a wooden shelter would actually be a more eco-friendly alternative for us. Because... Rocks aren't really a very sustainable way to build. Because um, they do obviously have to be mined out of the ground, whereas tree we can regrow. So I'm going to put this in here. I quite like this one. I add this here. Going to need to put some fencing up for our guests so they can't get onto the habitat. I press X and I'm just going to rotate it slightly. Um, I quite like that. I'm just going to raise ground. Not quite that much. Ooh, just pushing it back slightly. Quite like this. Okay. Raise it here. Check again, they can't escape now that we've edited the terrain. They can't. And they got some shelter there, so now they got that's enough hard shelter for them. So they're happy. That was a nice easy one as well. The terrain they're not super happy about though. Um because of the distribution of everything. So they need this is basically all sand, I think, when you look at it. It's pretty much all sand, and they need way less sand than they've got. They need more grass, more long grass. Let's put some long grass in. Essentially, we're just gonna paint this all in. So I'm gonna make this a nice long grassy section for them this can be this could be soil to be fair uh heavy soil hmm yeah um which looks way nicer <laughs> than what we have i'm gonna make this all short grass for them here And that might actually be good enough for them. Oh, there's too much short grass, not enough long grass. Bring that back. Basically, just want long grass everywhere. They like the old grass. Uh, actually, I want to keep that as soil down here. If we go down, this, if we can go under the water. Sometimes you have to click off a tool and then like click off a tab and then go back in. Uh, this could be rock down here, but I want to keep this kind of soil around here. Let me just turn the brush and we're we'll just kind of blend this in. And then rock at the bottom. This looks quite nice. Now oh, some long grass. Already looks way better. Oh, they need more sand. They do need some sand. So let's put in a little bit of sand along the shore here instead. Just wherever it hits the water, that's where we're going with. That's apparently that they're happy with that level of sand. A little bit more short grass, set along, and they're very happy with that. Which looks cool. I think it looks good already. I mean, oh, it doesn't, that's very relative because it, it looks terrible in the respect that we have absolutely no plants or anything yet. But if we go into nature, we're just about to fix that. So let's go add our plants. So sorry, we've done this. This is all complete now. We're basically just going through the tabs and seeing what they need to do. And then at the end, the overview, everything should be good. Let's go to the environment. They need way more plants and we can do it from grassland, tropical or aquatic. Um, we can click on these and it will filter out by these types in uh, South or Central America. So all of these plants should be suitable for our animals. And oh, these are cool. Okay. Wow. I'm going to have to put one of those in. And if they're not, then if I just get a random uh, tree, let's just add in another biome. Let's go temperate. What's a temperate tree? Goodness, now it's testing my knowledge of everything. Tell you what, instead of temperate, I'll give myself a slightly easier challenge. <laughs> let's put a desert one in. These desert plants, no, they're happy with them. Take off aquatic, tropical, and grassland. Coconut palm, right. These should be. Oh, they're actually okay. 
there are a number of plants that wow they're very chill about their plants essentially some plants will not be okay for these animals and oh it's because they're all in central south america right cactus okay <laughs> that's how you do it right these are not suitable so they flag up here and you can just click x and it will remove it for us so let's get back these filters anyway i'm gonna take off desert we can add some water lilies I think there's a there's a feature now you can align to water which i don't think works i've already clicked on it but yes so align to water these lily pads can now uh, just sit on the sit on the top which is very cute i just grab a have a few of them over there looking quite sweet i've got to have some palms love a good palm different types Got a few different banana palms in I want to kind of make it a... Wow, that's a weird tree. Secropia tree. Look at that. That's huge. don't even know if that looks... Does that look good? I mean, it, it makes you look up, doesn't it? Because we've got a few of them. A bit interesting, aren't they? Let's put them in. Why not, hey? I don't really like the broken trees. Oh my goodness. And now we're just getting even bigger. <laughs> I'm not sure how many of these big trees we need. Uh, as soon as we've... Let's put a Brazil nut in, sure. Gives us a bit of a focal point, doesn't it? And you go, wow, look over there. There's there's all of these trees. I don't think we're going to have room for another sapling. I don't think that's ever going to grow up. <laughs> um, let's put some of these plants by the, uh, the old rocks over here. Oh, that's too high. Just using shift to move them down. In fact, I should be able to align to surface on these as well. Um, I'm going to do that so that they, they automatically stand in the ground. You might turn it off and the reason I have this earlier was because I was probably placing something else. Um, but it is useful. It means that they kind of go at the, uh, the right angles and everything as well. So they're not just all directly, like pointing directly up when the ground's turned a really weird way. <laughs> um, let's have a couple of them over here too. And then coastal mangroves. See, these these don't do as well with the aligned surface. Don't know if I like the coastal mangroves in here. We could do some coconut palms though. Might turn aligned surface off. It's, it's good for like the uh, the small ones, like these little plants, but it can be a bit annoying with some of the larger ones. Let's put some elephant ear in. Everyone loves a bit of elephant ear. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. These are not normal sentences. Okay, lobster, lobster claw. Sure, why not? I'm not even checking if these are good for the animals anymore. Goodness, right here we go. Basically, oh, it's already good, but I want to, I want to put in more. I'm, I'm going mad now. I'm, I'm mad with the, uh, oh goodness, with massive trees that I'm allowed to put in. Oh, these trees are a bit ridiculous. Look at that. That's a bit much. Okay. Eelgrass, sure, I like this. Do we have any... Oh, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do on those. I'm going to undo. I am going to align surface on these. I'm just going to... Oh, no, it still looks weird. It still looks weird. Okay, okay. Bear with me here. See, I need some reeds or something. These aren't really proper reeds. Do we have any reeds in here? Common reeds. This is what I'm looking for. Common reeds, yeah, that'll do. Put some reeds in. Just going to slightly vary up the height. Um, maybe one meter there. Just to give a bit of interest on that side. And again, over here, I'm going to put some reeds around here. That one's a bit high. Clicking X and then moving it down with the green arrow. There you go. Okay, we'll add a bit more, a bit more nature in here now. It doesn't, it's not necessarily as nature-fired as it could be. Oh, let's add a little bit of color, a little bit of color. These are really stand out on here. Oh, accidentally liked it. Didn't mean to do that. 
adding it to my favorites by accident. But just having a little, a few little patches of uh, these pink ones, I think, will look quite nice. And just over here. In fact, I'm just going to angle them slightly. That's probably okay. Uh, we could put some palm trees in. I am going to add some coconut palms just because they're classics, aren't they? Um, let's put one here. Oh, wait a bit too high. Didn't actually check that they were in the ground. <laughs> okay, hopefully these are all in soon. Essentially, as, as long as we get a good filling of plants in, I think this is looking a lot prettier now. Um, I will go around when we've got a bit more money. I'm going to go around and just add some rocks around the side so it looks a bit nicer because I don't really like the look at the minute of the sides. Um, but I don't want to do that now because it's going to be a massive expense and we've not got a lot of money. So as long as they're happy, I'm happy. They are very happy. Um, enrichment, they don't have any, but let's go see if they do. They're not bonded yet, but that's fine. Okay. Let's see if we've got any enrichment for this animal. So we're going to habitat, we can do enrichment, and we can filter by a giant otter. We do! We have some... Okay, and then importantly, we need some food. So normally, you can find food in food and water, and these are all the places where you can uh, basically, like, underwater fish feeder or food trays, um, water bowls, etc. We don't need to do anything with the water because the water should be covered in our... Yeah, water cleaning area. So it is because it's blue. If it, if it weren't in this ring, it would be like grey. It wouldn't show up, I think. Um, so essentially it's fine. Uh, habitat, right. Let's go back to enrichment. So these both count. I might use the flat feeder. I've not used this one before. Just to put it here. So essentially with this, because it's deep enough in the water, they will then dive for this. So it's feeder ready. It would say like not deep enough. But the... Uh, the otters will dive down and basically cat, like eat the fish from the air, which is really from the water, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, we've got a little fish feeder in there. So that's their food done. That will count as food enrichment probably as well. But let's put some actual like toys and stuff. So let's have a sprinkler. Ooh, ground didn't like that. Let's have a sprinkler there. Um, a colourful ball. Yeah. Um, an ice ball. Let's put an ice ball over there and a small ball like that's going to roll into the water we're going to roll no it's just been caught i'm going to move it though because it looks a bit weird there okay now they can play with them if they want and they are way happier now they need more toy enrichment interestingly okay well we can do that we just put in more of these And more balls and see if they're happy with them. Okay, that didn't actually help. That didn't actually help too much. Oh, okay, I think one was enough from that. They just want some more different types, which is fair enough. Going to enrichment, yeah, it's the same. I'm just gonna get rid of this other ball over here. Look! Playing with the ice ball. How cute. They're pretty happy though. And now we've got our little otters inside. They're running around. You're going to go in the water. Can we see one of them swim? Been so focused on building, I haven't actually watched them swim yet. You're going to go in for a swim? Come on, little one. You know you want to. You know you want to. You want to play with the ball. That's what he wants. Or she. She. Elena. 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 Just knock the ball in the water. Come on. Come on, yeah, that's it. Jump in, jump in. Look at her. How cute is that? Look at her. Oh, is she going to go underwater? 
No, he's just playing with the ball. Adorable. <laughs> 